Yes, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this uh, interesting workshop. So, I'm going to talk about uh, space time structure in the type 2 matrix model. This talk is based on uh, uh, collaboration with uh, Kota Hatakeyama, Akira Matsumoto, Jun Nishimura, and Atis Yosprakov. So, so let me start with uh, introduction. So here we consider the 2B matrix model, uh, which was nicely reviewed by Kawai-san yesterday. And uh, this model is a proposal for uh, non-perturbative formulation of super string theory. The action is here. Uh, the bosonic part is here, and the fermic part is here. Here are uh, a mu and psi are n by n Hermitian matrices, and the a mu and psi are transformed as a 10 dimensional Lorentz vector and a 10 dimensional Majorana wire spinner under the uh, SO9, 1 uh, transformation. So, what is uh, important is that uh, space time does not exist a priori but it's generated dynamically from degrees of freedom of the matrices. Um, so we interpret a mu as uh, coordinates uh, representing whole universe here. And uh, what is interesting is that uh, we can ask uh, whether three plus one dimensional space time emerges or not in this model. So now there are some evidences for uh, the evidence is that uh, this model gives a uh, non perturbative formulation of super string theory. The first is that, uh, uh, first of all, uh, the model has a manifest SO9, 1 symmetry and a manifest 10 dimensional n equal to super symmetry. The second one is uh, this the action is uh, regarded as matrix regularization of Green Schwartz action of shield type for type 2B superstring with kappa symmetry fixed. The third one is uh, uh, that uh, the long distance behavior of uh, interaction between d brains is reproduced in this model. The fourth one is uh, the uh, right constraint free theory for type 2B superstring is reproduced from schwinger dyson equation for Wilson loops under some uh, reasonable assumptions. And this uh, last one is that uh, uh, actually uh, this model has a manifest connection to type 2B type string theory. But uh, if you believe string duality, uh, you can start from anywhere with uh, non perturbative formulation, which enables you to track strong coupling regime. So we expect that this model uh, represents uh, not only uh, the type 2B string, but also the st whole string super string theory. So, so now let me explain the difference between the Euclidean version and the Lorentzian version of this model. In the Lorentzian model, the bosonic part of the action takes this form. Thus the sum of these two terms, where f mu nu is given by the <coughs> commutator of a mu and a nu. This is a, a Hermitian matrix. So you can see that the, these two terms have opposite sign, so which means that uh, this model, this model uh, is extremely unstable system. So this is why no one, no one dared to study the Lorentzian model for more than 15, 15 years. 15 years. On the other hand, in the uh, Euclidean model is obtained by the weak, weak rotation, which is given by this uh, procedure. And uh, then you, you obtain the bosonic action, which is positive definite. Furthermore, uh, the classical flat direction, which is given by congregation uh, like this, is uh, lifted due to quantum effects. 
uh, by explain, uh, as explained by Kawaii-san yesterday. So finally, uh, it was shown that uh, the Euclidean model is well defined without any cutoffs. But uh, here we study the Lorentzian model. The reason is the following. We would like to see the uh, evolution of the universe. So we need to study the real time dynamics. And uh, the second reason is that uh, it seems like uh, weak rotation in gravitational theory is more subtle than field theory on flat space, space time. For instance, uh, causal dynamic current, <laughs> it, uh, this fact is seen in the uh, so called uh, causal dynamic interrogation and uh, Coleman mechanism in space time with Lorentzian signature. Yeah, as explained by Kawai san yesterday. So now it seems like the it seems like the, uh, the Lorentzian model can be totally different from the Euclidean model. So here we study the Lorentzian model version of the 2B matrix model. Now so this, uh, the, our claim in this talk is the following. The definition of the Lorentzian model is not straightforward. So Monte Carlo studies suffer from the sign problem or complex action problem. So we have to use the uh, complex Langevin method to simulate this uh, Lorentzian model. And uh, we find that the uh, 3 plus 1 dimensional expanding universe emerges dynamically in this model. But uh, the mechanism, uh, oh. sorry. Mm. Uh, certain, OK. Sorry. Mm. Oh. Oh. oh, sorry. OK, so, so now the, but the, the mechanism suggests a singular space-time structure. So finally, we discussed the emergence of a smooth space-time in this model. Actually, uh, uh, it turns out that the classical solution should dominate the path integral at uh, late times. Actually, there we find that there are, oh sorry, there are infinitely, <coughs> infinitely many classical solutions which have three plus one dimensional expanding behavior with a smooth space time structure, which supports the emergence of a smooth space time in the full theory. Okay, so the plan of the present talk is the following. Now we finish the uh, introduction. And in section two, uh, we, we are going to define the Lorentzian model. And uh, in section three, we will show you the emergence of three plus one dimensional expanding behavior. And uh, in section four, we discuss the emergence of a smooth space, a smooth space time. The, this is the first part of this talk. The, in the second part of this talk, we analyze, we analyze the classical equations of, equations of motion. And uh, we examine in section six, uh, we, uh, we, extra, we, uh, we, uh, disc, we, dis we discuss space-time structure in classical solution. In, now, uh, finally, we summarize and discuss. OK. So, let me uh, define the Lorentzian model, which is quite non-trivial. So the partition function of the Lorentzian model is given here, where we have uh, we have i factor i in front of, in front of the action. Uh, actually, this seems to be natural from the connection to the Walsh theory. Because uh, this is a shield type action, and uh, in the Lorentzian version, uh, in, in the Lorentzian signature, the world sheet, co world sheet coordinates should also be weak rotated. So we have uh, extra factor, we get uh, extra factor i in front of 
the in front of the action S. So th this uh, I correspond to this I. It, so now uh, if you integrate over the Fermat matrices psi, you obtain the Pachyon here. So, but uh, uh, unlike the Euclidean model, the Lorentzian model is not well defined as it is. Okay. So you now this is a partition function, and uh, you ha you have a pure phase factor here, and this is a this is only this is a just a polynomial in matrix MU, but it, the problem is this factor. So, so if you, so without any without any uh, regularization, the poly, uh, the matrices, the elements of mat matrices mu diverges. So we need to introduce the infrared cutoffs so that the extent of in temporal and spatial directions become finite. So this is a uh, this. We impose this constraint on the matrix A0 A and AI. Okay, so now in what rows uh, we set L equal to 1 without loss of generality? Okay, so, so now, but the pure imaginary action okay, is hard to <coughs> deal with numerically. Okay, now we have a phase, pure phase factor here. So this, it is difficult to treat uh, this uh, uh, PIM imaginary action. So we introduced two more, two more fun deformation parameters, S and K here. Okay. So we defined the partition function with a pass integral weight E2 minus S here. Okay. Here we, we define the S by uh, e2 minus s here, and uh, so s is given here. We need uh, two parameters s and k here. So s, this factor corresponds to weak rotation on the world sheet, and uh, on the other hand, this uh, factor corresponds to the weak rotation in the target space, which is realized by this uh, replacement. Sorry, will these factors enter the Fafian as well? Sorry? Will they enter the Fafian? Fafian, yeah, okay, yes, yes, okay. yes. But uh, Fafian is a um, homogeneous polynomial, so it's not, not harmless. Okay, so... And... Uh, so, so now, okay, so... We should remark that uh, S and K equal to zero correspond to the target theory, the Lorentzian model. Okay, so actually uh, the f first term, which has this factor, can be made real, real positive by choosing this factor equal to uh, minus one, which means that uh, K equal uh, equal to K is k equals uh, one, 1 plus s over 2. So we focus on this case for the moment, for simplicity. So now this is, this is a summary of the definition of the model. Partition function is given by uh, integral over dA with uh, e to minus sA times partition. And uh, s uh, is given here. And we have two parameters, S, uh, S and K here. And uh, we, we uh, introduced the uh, in infrared cutoffs given by this constraint. So now this is a phase diagram, something like phase diagram, K and K, K axis and S axis. And uh, this is a line we focus on for the moment. And uh, this this, uh, this corresponds to the original Lorentzian model, and uh, on the other hand, uh, this, is cor this corresponds to the Euclidean model. Okay. So now we can draw the another line, 
which is given by k equal to half of s. Actually, if when k is less than half, a, half of s, the real part of the first term is negative. So, so the eigenvalues of A not repeal, repeal each other. So it turns out that uh, we have obtained no continuous time in this case. So this, this region is physically meaningless. So we exclude this region from the beginning. Now, so now, now let me comment on the uh, complex Langevin method we use in this uh, study. So now, in in this method, uh, we we complexify the uh, A mu, namely uh, A mu is changed from Hamisha matrix into complex matrix. Now we update the A mu following the following this Langevin equation, where S S effective is given by S uh, in given by this uh, equation, including the contribution from Parfian. And this is uh, the tau is a fictional time fictional time. Fictional time and uh, this this is called the drift term and this is a white noise. White noise. So this is this uh, this theory is powerful for the system which has a complex action problem. But uh, we you should remark that uh, uh, whether this method this this method uh, does not always work well. Whether this method works well depends on the system, or more precisely, uh, the parameter region of the system. I don't know this real. Yeah, you can <coughs> consider the complex one, but uh, not, uh, not so. The result is the same. OK, so now, OK, so we, I will show you the uh, emergence of three plus one dimensional expanding behavior. So now, this is a phase diagram of this system. And we focus on this line for technical, some technical reason. So now we, in particular here, we, we concentrate on this point, s minus 1 and k equal, s k k equal to ze 0. So in this case, the action becomes real, like this. Now the first term favors AJ close to diagonal, right? while the second term favors the maximal non-commutativity between AJ. So now, okay. So now let me explain how to extract the time evolution from this model, because we have no a priori. A priori, we have no time in this. Model. So now, by using the SUN symmetry, we can diagonalize A naught. In other words, uh, we take the gauge in which A naught is diagonal, like this. So now T1, T2, and Tn, uh, these eigenvalues, are determined dynamically. That not, not fixed by hand, but determined dynamically. So, and we have, uh, they, they have this order here. So now it turns out that uh, uh, in this gauge, the AI, no, sorry, I, I oh, okay, so, okay, AI, uh, one, two, sorry, nine, nine, should be, should be nine, uh, has a band, the band line, band line structure. Which is, which is non-trivial. This, uh, namely, uh, only the elements near the diagonal line are large, while the other off-diagonal elements are small. 
So let me denote the width of the band by lower case n, like this. So we can define the n by n small diagonal block here. So we, so co we can corresponding uh, n by n blocks, n by n, n diagonal block here, which include n eigenvalues of a naught. So we take the average of these n eigenvalues and denote it by t. Now uh, we can consider the similar, similar di uh, diagonal blocks like this. So now we denote this uh, diagonal <coughs> block by uh, ai bar of t. So we obtain the function of t, ai, of t, AI bar of t. So it is natural to consider the AI bar of T represents space structure at fixed time T. And uh, so this band diagonal structure guarantees the uh, locality of time because uh, this di of diagonal elements represent the interaction between the different time. So this uh, smallness guarantees the locality of the time. So now we in this way, we obtain a concept of time evolution dynamically in this model, which is non-trivial. Now, let me ex examine the uh, three plus one dimensional expanding behavior, emergence of three plus one dimensional expanding behavior. For that, uh, we define the analog of uh, moment of inertia tensor like this. So now let, let, me, let us recall that AI bar of T is an N by N matrix here. This is a function of T. So this, is, this trace is taken over N by N matrices. Now this, is a, uh, this matrix is, uh, sorry, uh, sorry. OK, so. 9 by 9 by so 9 by 9 but 9 by 9 sorry 5 5 uh, let I I'll, I'll restrict the space time dimension to 5 later but in general this is a 1 to 9 this is a 9 by 9 symmetric matrix uh, and uh, okay so eigenvalues uh, lambda 1 to lambda 9, okay, represents the spatial extent in each direction in nine directions. So, okay, so now we simulate the model by complex Langevin method. So for simplicity, we omit the contribution from uh, fermions and uh, we consider the six-dimensional bosonic model, which means that uh, mu Index mu ran from 0 to, 0 to, 0 to, 0 to 5. So now Tij becomes 5, 5 cross 5, 5, type, 5 by 5 symmetric matrices. The, it has a, a function of T and uh, eigenvalues, uh, 5 eigenvalues depend on T. Okay. So we simulate the model at uh, n equal. 128 and kappa 0.13 and beta equal 2 and s equal minus 1 and k equal 0. <coughs> so the, the, the result is here. So uh, we plot the eigenvalues lambda 1 and from lambda 2, lambda 5 against t here. You see that the, in the beginning of the time, they, they, are, they degenerate. But uh, at some at some critical time, uh, three of them start to expand like this. And uh, the other two eigenvalues remain small. So <coughs> this means that the uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking of SO9 to SO3 occurs at uh, some point in time here. OK. So 
So now we, uh, we, we, we get uh, uh, expanding, expanding in 3 plus 1 expanding behavior here. It's a, it's a good news, <laughs> but uh, so now we, so we, we consider the mechanism of uh, this SSB. So let us recall that uh, we have action here. And uh, the first term favors AJ cross to diagonal, and the second term favors maximal non-commutativity between AJ. So the competition between these two effects Uh, makes AI almost diagonal, band diagonal structure. So this is good. So now, but so, so we can, we can make a uh, following questions. Maximize uh, this non-commutativity between AI bar and AJ, AJ bar T, AJ bar of T, for uh, trace over trace of AI bar of T square constant is fixed. Fixed. So the answer, so this is a suitable question for the problem. So understand the typical conjugation in our simulation. So the answer to this question is the following. Actually, AI, this, this is, uh, this, this is to solved by analytically. So AI bar of T is proportional to essentially Pauli matrices for I equal one, two, three, while uh, AI bar of T equal to zero for I equal four and five, up to SO5 rotation. So this is, uh, this gives actually the three, 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 plus three, dimen three dimensional space. Actually, so we confirm the mechanism, mechanism in our simulation. We define this quantity Q, which is the sum over I of AI bar of T squared. So now the, this uh, Q has, uh, Q is actually the lower case N, N by N by N matrix. So they, it has uh, n eigenvalues. So we plot the n eigenvalues against t. This is the result. So you, you see that uh, only two, actually only two eigenvalues uh, expand like this, and uh, the others uh, remain small. So only two eigenvalues, q become large. So we con in this way, we confirm the mechanism. So, so this is the bad news. This is uh, this, it seems like this is a singular space time. So now we, we would like to obtain the smooth space time. So now, so in order to. Could you take this uh, Pauli matrices, if you can? Yeah. How, how we previously we kept it. There are, what is the dimension of AI? Ah, okay, okay, sorry. Uh, so, see, okay, so. Um, okay. If uh, okay, so essentially it's given by. Are they? Ah, ah, this is ah, okay. So this is the uh, okay AI AI bar is given by some Pauli matrices. Pauli matrices here and others zero, zero, up to SU SUN symmetry. This is. A, So now, so excuse me. Why oh. not higher spin representation n by n? Say, mm, right, uh, yeah. So this is uh, so yeah. This is a mm, this is an answer for answer to this uh, question. Yes, yes. This is an analytic. So, yeah. so okay. So um, so now we 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 want to obtain a smooth space time. So now in, for that we explore, explore the phase diagram. Actually we, we, sh we simulated at this point and uh, which leads to the singular space time. 
So now we, now we, we are focusing on this line in this study. And uh, so let us call the form of the action again here. The second term, the first term is no, has no phase factor, but the, the second term has this factor here. So you see that the real part of this factor changes as sine at uh, s, s equal to zero. So which means that uh, uh, this term, this term uh, favors uh, uh, maximal non-commutativity between AI for negative s, while, while uh, minimize this non-commutativity for positive s. So that this uh, drastically changes the effect of this second term at s equals zero. So we expect something happens at this point around, around, around s, s equals zero. So, so the question, our question is that uh, can we obtain three plus one dimensional expanding behavior with a sm smooth space time structure? So now we examine around this point. Okay. So now this is, uh, this is our result. We compare the uh, s equal minus one case and s equal s around the case around in which s around s is around zero. This is we 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 put the, the result at s equal minus one here again. Um, we plot the, uh, the five eigenvalues of uh, this tensor against t like this, and uh, we put plot plot the eigenvalues of Q against T here. Okay, so... Is it a commutator, A bar I, T, A bar J, T? No, the only, only the, yes, only, yeah. So now, so this is a, okay, so the lower panel is the result at S around zero. Actually, S takes a value uh, what, 0 0.0076, so slightly positive. So now you, you see that the three plus one dimensional structure remains, okay. And the uh, good news is that uh, the we, we see that the departure from Pauli matrices, actually other eigenvalues of Q becomes large here. So now we also, study the hermeticity of the sp spatial matrices. Now let us recall that the AI bar of t is defined here. Now so we define the uh, quantity R square of t uh, which, is, which represents the extent of space here at the time t. And uh, we plot the uh, real part of R square and the imaginary part of R squared against time, against t, the, the, you see that the real part of R square expands like this, while the imaginary part is decreased at uh, around the peak of the real part of R square. This is a good, good news. This corresponds to, we, say, we, say, we consider this, this part is correspond to the late time at late time in the universe. So at late times, the, we obtain the real space time. And uh, we also define the hermeticity for the matrix AI bar of T. This is a definition of H of T. Okay, so this, so you can see that this, this quantity takes a value between zero and one, one and zero correspond to Hermitian matrix, matrices, while the one correspond to anti-Hermitian matrices. So now you see that uh, this, uh, we plot the h of t against t. Um, you see that the h of t becomes close, close, to, uh, close to zero around the peak of r square of t. This is a good, this is a good news. So now this, this means 
spatial matrices become close to Hermitian near the peak of a real part of R square of T. So this, this, suggests, implies, this suggests that a classical solution seems to be dominating in this region. Actually, classical solution is uh, actually, uh, actually a Hermitian matrix. So now we further study the model at larger n. We simulate at n equal 192 here. here. So we compare the result for two values here. OK, so this ho at, nine, at n equal 192, we, we, oh, we still have a 3 plus 1 dimensional expanding behavior here. And also, we, we see that uh, clear departure from power matrices compared to n equal the case in with n equal to equal to 100 to 128. Okay, so this is a clearer, clearer than this one. Okay, so so I mean the expansion becomes anisotropic at some stage. The eigenvalues are are they close to each other? Close to each other. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it's with SO3, yes. So now, OK, so we conjecture, we, we expect from this result that uh, we, we obtain the completely smooth space time structure in the large end limit. So now, OK, let me start. OK, let me move on, move on to the second part of the talk which is, of course, related to the first part. So now we analyze the classical equations of motion. So now the, let me explain the motivation for studying the classical solution. So now the result in numerical simulation in the first part of this talk suggests that uh, some classical solution is dominating the path integral in the time region near the peak. Which correspond to which is considered corres considered to correspond to late times in the universe, and uh, we also expect that uh, the classical equations motion are ex expected to become more and more valid at later times, which are seen at larger. Actually, we if we if we increase. Uh, N, then we can see the later times. Because the value of the action increases with the cosmic expansion. So classical approximation is valid at this region. So it is worth studying classical solutions. Actually, we find that there are infinitely many classical solutions which have 3 plus 1 dimensional expanding behavior with a smooth space-time structure. This is a good news. This fact suggests, supports that uh, we obtain 3 plus 1 dimensional expanding behavior with a smooth space time structure in a full simulation of the model. So now, the late time behavior are difficult to study by direct numerical simulation because larger matrix size are required. Fortunately, we can solve classical equation motion with larger matrix size much easier than the complex Langevin method. So we develop a numerical algorithm for searching for classical solutions, satisfying the most general answers with quasi-direct product structure, which I, I will explain later. So if some classical solution indeed dominates the bus integral at later times, we can discuss the possibility that the standard model appears by or not, yeah, appears or not, by examining various classical solutions. But I will not discuss this point in this talk. So this is a nice reference here. So now, now let so we let us study the solve the equation motion which takes this home. That's actually the double commutator home, which have been 
discussed in this workshop. So now <laughs> this term comes from the bosonic part of the action. Sorry, this is uh, so oh, okay. So now M M okay. So now capital capital M the uh, run from zero to nine here, and uh, I run from uh, I to nine here. So this part uh, is correspond to the uh, correspond to comes from the constraints, and alpha and beta are Lagrange multipliers. This is constraints. This part, this part, these come from this constraints. Actually, this corres this these constraints correspond to the infrared cutoff. Now, so in solving the equations of motion, we assume the configuration with quasi direct product structure. We assume that following structure uh, a mu mu here phi mu run from zero to three and a run from four to nine. So now we have uh, some factor m, which is considered to correspond to some warp factor, warp factor here. And ya represents the structure of extra dimension, extra six dimensional, six dimensional extra dimensions. So now we denote the size of this matrix n x, while we denote the size of this matrix n y. The total size, of course, is given by n x times m. And uh, m actually m equal one corresponds to the direct product space time of four, four dimension and six dimension. But we have uh, some generalization here to warp factor here. <coughs> But each point, but this fact, yeah, okay, in, in this configuration, each point on three plus one dimension space time has the same structure in the extra dimension. Does M come from the previous slide? No. no just some, matrix. So, some, some matrix. We determine the, the by solving the equation motion. So now this answer is actually, this answer is compatible with the Lorentz symmetry to be expected at rate times. Here the O. O is an element of SO3, comma 1, and uh, G, G is an uh, element of SU, NX. Actually, this, this congregation has this symmetry. So now, so now let me comment on the structure of YA and chiral zero modes. So YA and M should determine matter contents and gauge interactions. Here, M and YA, is, which belong to the extra dimension. So for instance, block diagonal structure of YA can give chiral zero modes, because each block corresponds to some d brain which can intersect at intersect, uh, each other like this. So you obtain the chiral zero modes at the intersecting points, which come from the uh, short string, which stretched between the two d brains. But uh, this is an interesting subject. But uh, I, I, I have no time so to discuss this, this point in this talk. So now this is the algorithm for finding solutions. We consider the essentially the square square of the equation of motion here, like this. So we this is the, our our uh, assumption. So now uh, now we search for the configuration that gives uh, i equal to zero. Then we obtain the uh, solution to the equation of motion. So now in order to uh, find this uh, con this uh, combination which satisfy this uh, condition, we use a, what is called gradient descent algorithm, which uh, we update configurations following the, these equations. Actually, we we change the x mu and y a and m following this equation, these equations. So, if you uh, if you take the epsilon uh, small enough, the, this uh, equation guarantees uh, 
the, the variation of i is negative. So eventually, you, uh, we, we get to, to some configuration with i equals 0. So now, so let me show you the space-time structure in classical solution. So now we we have uh, we get uh, we have we have obtained uh, many solutions. But uh, typical we we will show you a typical solution. So now oh, we we show you band diagonal structure of Xi. This is a matrix of uh, we plot the this quantity the absolute square of absolute value of the element xiab uh, this is a matrix this is a column the row and column row and column of matrices so you see the band diagonal structure actually here so now this uh, so we determine the width of the band to uh, 10, 10 here, 10 in this case. So now we examine the, uh, the, this, uh, this uh, eigenvalues of this uh, inertia tensor, uh, moment of inertia tensor. So now you see that, uh, sorry, uh, OK. You, you see the almost isosymmetric. Uh, this congregation has a isosymmetric structure here. So now uh, we plot the R square, which represents the extent of space at time t against, we plot R, R square of t here. This is, we have an expanding behavior here. So now, we examine the quantity Q, eigenvalues of Q. This, so this is a, actually this is a 10 by 10 matrix in this case. So we have 10 eigenvalues of Q, and uh, we plot them against T here. So you see that uh, they uh, they have a dense distribution. So which. Uh, which means that the smooth structure of space here. This is a good. Okay. okay, so let me summarize the summarize of my talk. So the Lorentzian version of the two B matrix model with certain generalization. The, we examine this uh, model. The so action is here. We introduced the two deformation parameters, <coughs> S and K, here. So we impose uh, constraints on A0 and AI here. So now we, uh, explore, uh, we examine the phase diagram like this. So in this talk, we focus on this line. This, this is a, actually, this is a target, target theory, but uh, for technical reason, uh, we concentrate on this line in this talk. So, so now we found that uh, we, we get uh, three plus one dimensional expanding sp structure, but uh, which has a singular space time. So now, we explore the point around this s equal zero. Okay. Then we it turns out that uh, uh, we obtain uh, three plus one dimension expanding sp smooth space time here. So so transition from the Pauli matrices to uh, smooth space time happens at slightly positive s for n equal 128, 100, 192. So the question is that the, the, does the tra transition point approaches s equal 0 at large n, larger n. 
Actually, we, we have a slightly a positive S here, but uh, the target theory has uh, S equals 0. So we, 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 we want to approach S equals 0 uh, by simulating at larger end. So, and uh, complex Angevin simulation becomes unreliable due to growing non hermeticity when we decrease k from uh, this line too much. So, but uh, if you increase n, we expect approach this line to this target, target theory here. So the question is, can we approach the target theory with s and k equal to 0 at larger n? So, and uh, does the 3 plus 1 dimensional expanding smooth, smooth space time sub survive there or not? So we found, we, we found that the hermeticity of spatial, spatial matrices emerges as the space expands. This suggests that the classical solution is the dominating there. This is also expected from the fact that the, the action becomes large there due to the space expansion. So we Actually, we found that there are infinitely many classical solutions which have 3 plus 1 dimensional expanding behavior with a smooth space time structure. This supports that uh, we obtain 3 plus 1 dimensional expanding smooth space time in the large end limit. So, also, uh, if, some, if some classical solution indeed dominates at later, late times, we can discuss a uh, possibility that the standard model appears or not by examining various classical solutions. And uh, let me comment on the effect of the fermionic matrices. Actually, it is not straightforward to, to include the effect of fermionic matrices because uh, of the singular drift problem <coughs> in the complex range of method. Actually, drift term becomes large, becomes too large, so, which is uh, ca caused by the near zero eigenvalues of the Dirac operator. But uh, maybe, po but uh, simulation may be possible by deforming the Dirac operator. And uh, so, extrapolate the, the, the result to the uh, target values, target theory. So now, OK, so let me skip this, this statement. So now, so this is uh, what, what we will study in the future. We further search for solutions and examining 3 plus 1 dimensional space time structure and matter contents and gauge interaction that the solution gives. We expect that there exists a solution that realizes the standard model or beyond the, the standard model, and that it is indeed selected in the sense that our numerical simulation is connected to uh, such a solution. But uh, it, it may be, might be hard to reach this uh, classical solution by direct numerical simulation. In that case, uh, we can calculate one loop, for instance, one loop effective action around the classical solutions <coughs> we have found. We, ex e we expect that uh, effective action for the solution given standard model was its generalization at low energy to be minimal. So, so we have to continue this kind of study in the future. That's all. Thank you. Yes. Questions, comments? Yeah. Yes. It looks that, that you have 10 matrices, please no, because you forget about fermions, yes. and excuse to have uh, 10 matrices disappeared, mm. yeah. Yeah. and you replace by 5, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yes, it's, it's yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's... Yeah. So we consider, okay, so, yeah, yeah, excuse, yeah, <laughs> okay, we consider the 
the qualitative behavior is the same for the original model, but the detail of the so expansion some or the some matter contents of a gauge interaction is of course different. But the expanding behavior is essentially the same. Yeah. Kibo? Yeah. Uh, so what what is I'm, I'm lost after a while. Uh, what is the justification for saying that uh, TIJ uh, mm. is like GIJ? You are saying this is like a space-time metric. No, uh, this is a, uh, not not mm, not a geometric. Uh, what is where is the expansion? Where is the space-time here? And where is the expansion? Can you justify that this is? Okay. okay. Actually, uh, so the. Mm. In the 2B matrix model, uh, a, a mu represents the coordinates of space time. So, if you, so now we extract the time evolution by coordinates when I have d brains separated by some distances. Yes. Mm, the, mm, we yeah we, we want to find an expanding space time. So. Space time. Yes. Some yeah. <coughs> so we define the yeah so. This is a sorry. Actually, this quantity. Uh, <coughs> okay, so eigenvalues of AI correspond to coordinates in space. So this uh, this correspond to so yeah actually yeah actually a AI. Uh, it, this correspond to actually we consider this this represents uh, uh, the kind of uh, the m actually moment of inertial tensor. This is. A but are you saying physically we have like a configuration of the brains and this configuration? Mm, uh, so uh, yeah, it's one that. Yeah, yeah. So now, so. You have, if you have this configuration, you have some, some objects like, or some energy density here. Then uh, you, can, you can define the energy momentum tensor, something like that. You are not yeah. using like KLT uh, mm -hmm. link between uh, yeah. new and GMU here. GMU, yeah, it's, it's not so. Not so straightforward, I think. Yes, it's yeah, so it's a problem. Yeah. All right. Um, so at some point you stated as a result that the matrices are almost Hermitian. Okay. So I was wondering. I mean, why can one not define a, a simple-minded big rotation like in quantum field theory, mm -hmm. imposing that the matrices are Hermitian by hand, such that you still keep some damping factor with epsilon, mm -hmm. and then studied that. Is, is it just a numerical problem that this is hard to handle or why can one not just do the mm, uh, Okay, so we use, uh, okay, so we have a complex action, so we generate, okay, so we, we, we have to use complex random method, so in this, uh, in this method, the uh, AMU should be converted to complex matrix. So, okay, that's, want to use yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, yes, yes, yes. So. And in your simulation so far, it was <coughs> do you put the log of the Fafian or you don't? Uh, we, no, uh, we, oh, we omit yeah, this, this effect. Neglect. Okay, sure. Just for simplicity. <coughs> when you you have you have manifest SO nine symmetry in among the pi is equal to one to nine. Yes, yes. yes. Yet uh, three of them are being picked out. <laughs> three directions are being picked out. Three directions? What? Sorry. You have it. Yeah. I mean, in the, in your dynamical system, there is nothing that picks out any of the three directions. Nothing special. Nothing. Nothing special from the beginning. Yeah. We we we. We make uh, we impose no answers. Why is it not a, a problem of ergodicity? In your ergodicity is uh, yeah yeah we can yeah we check the ergodicity actually yeah 
this, uh, yeah, if you start with, you can start with any initial condition, then we, you, you obtain the same result. You can obtain, you can start with any, any initial condition in simulation. Then, you, but uh, eventually you obtain the same, same result. I show you, I show you. Eugene, was your question, you asked the question during the talk. Was it actually answered or maybe well, misunderstood? I mean, that's the solution. I mean, what no, I mean, you, I think your question was actually, does it have to be two dimensional? Right, because the sigma. you wrote sigma yeah, 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 for yeah, the yeah. solution. Yeah. I think yeah, your question was, what about n dimensions? Right. So you're yeah. saying that's sort of relatively yeah. you know, not important. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is a. Uh, your question is why we obtain the two dimensional representation? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is. I mean, I would, since three comes from SU two, obviously, mm. I would have imagined you know n by <coughs> n representation mm. of SU two might be competing with it. Competing, yeah. But uh, the, the, yeah, you yeah. It turns out that if you yeah. If you solve this problem, then uh, we obtain uh, this uh, configuration. But this configuration is not satisfactory to sort of allow you to say you generated space time, no? Because I, I would have imagined all the eigenvalues. Okay, so th yeah, excuse me. This is okay. This is bad, bad, bad space time. So actually, this is only two eigenvalues of Q become large, but. Uh, uh, after that, we, yeah, we, this is a result in, at this point, but at around this point, we obtain the, uh, actually, the departure from the Pauli matrices. Actually, this is, uh, the, actually, you, you obtain the large eigenvalues, so for instance, one, two, three, four, five, six, here. Then, this is actually different from Pauli matrices configuration. So we obtain the smooth structure in the large limit. I mean, I guess I could mm. have asked whether there, in that regime, maybe n by n version of this uh, SU2 is important, whether it makes appearance there. Mm, SU2, mm, ah, OK, so mm, you. Mm, you, yeah, yeah, we haven't, yeah, sorry, we, we haven't examined that, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Any further comments, questions? We'll ask what is the, what is the reason this departure from Pauli matrices for large eigenvalues mm. gives you the singular space time, in what sense? Departure from, pa, pa, but, okay, okay. Smooth, smooth space time. Yes. Smooth, okay. Smooth. Many, 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 yeah. Smooth. This. Uh, yes. This is not complete, but uh, yeah, it tends to change the uh, yeah Pauli mat the singular matrix to smooth, smooth singular ma singular space time to smooth space time. This is a uh, some uh, this uh, I think so. Yeah. This is a sign sign of this such a transition from singular space time to smooth space time. Singular means because this is like a fuzzy sphere of a very small. Very thing. small, yes, 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 that's, that's, uh, not a quick idea. Not that's, that's right, that's right. Well, we have lots of time during the lunch break, if there are no further questions. Let's thank you.